All right, guys, so now that we've gone through the general reactions of oxidation, I did want to show you at least one sample mechanism from the different reagents that you could use so that you have an idea of how oxidation works, okay? Now, just so you guys know, professors don't always ask for this mechanism. In fact, I've seen more commonly that they don't care. They just want you to know what the product is. But I'm including this mechanism for your own reference, and also, maybe you'll understand it better, and maybe, who knows, your professor could ask for it. So let's go and jump right in. We're going to talk about the Jones reagent, which if, if, you ever remember, if you remember, I told you is one of the chromium 6 plus reagents, okay? So first of all, it's one of the most popular oxidizing agents. That's why you do hear about it, the Jones reagent. It's pretty, po pretty common. And the way that it's generated is through a strong acid with a Cr6 plus, a chromium 6 plus reagent, okay? Now, usually what that's going to be is CrO3 and H2SO4, okay? H2SO4 is your strong acid, CrO3 is your source of chromium, but, I mean, it, it changes, okay? And a lot of the other chromium reagents that you see that, may, that, that have potassium or sodium in them actually wind up eventually breaking down into Jones reagent anyway, okay? So... First of all, let's talk about like what's going on here. We know that we have a strong oxidizing agent. What are we starting with? What kind of um, alcohol would that be? Well, because of the number of R groups, I see that I have one, two R groups. This is a secondary alcohol. Is everyone on the same page with that? And then this is my, um, my CRO3 that just has a hydrogen on it because it's in a strong acid. Okay, so what do you guys think the first step is? Well, first of all, also, if we have a secondary alcohol, how many times can this thing be oxidized? How many more bonds to oxygen could it possibly have? Well, remember that the rule says you can never break carbon-carbon bonds. You already have two bonds to carbon, so that means at most I can have two bonds to oxygen. Do I have two bonds to oxygen right now? No, I only have one, so that's why we're going to go ahead and oxidize this thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start off with the beginning of this mechanism, which is a nucleophilic attack. Okay, now notice that this chromium has an extremely strong positive charge. Why? Because I've got dipoles everywhere. I've got tons of dipoles pulling away electrons from that chromium. Okay, so if my alcohol was to attack one of those atoms, we would expect it to attack the chromium. So let's go ahead and draw in that step. Alcohol attacks the chromium. Okay. But we've got a problem that chromium can make six bonds, it can't make seven bonds. So if we make a bond, we have to break a bond. We're going to break one of these double bonds, and they're going to grab an H from acid in solution. Okay, so a lot of times there'll be water present. This is, a, this is just a protonated version of water. Okay, and then finally, if you make that bond, you have to break a bond, we're going to kick out the water. Okay, so now what we're going to get is this very strange molecule. Let me just help you guys keep track. The chromium still has six bonds, right? But now instead of having two double bonds, it has an OH where I'm just going to use colors to show you guys. This OH here is this OH here. Nothing happened to that one. Okay? And then this O is here. The only difference is that now this O has an OH on it. Does that make sense? Because the O grabbed an H. Okay? So now what we're going to get is a proton transfer because as you notice there is a positive charge on the O to get some water really quick so there's a positive on the O we need to get rid of that positive and we can use one of the alcohols to do it so one of the alcohols is going to grab the H deprotonate that that um, O and what we're going to wind up forming is a water molecule okay so let's go ahead and draw the product of this next step all right, this one you just have to draw it. I don't have it drawn out for you. So we're going to go ahead and have this. Nothing changed over here. R, H, R. Remember, this is what originally was the alcohol. And then we've got O, okay? But now that O is neutral, and it's attached to chromium. Double bond O. Um, an O negative here, okay? Um, the water here with a positive charge and that alcohol, the yellow alcohol is still there too. Okay, so does the chromium still have six bonds? Yeah, we're good. 
Okay, so now that's our new molecule. What's going to happen in this next step is an elimination step. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick out that water because now it's a great leaving group. So I'm going to go ahead and reform my double bond, kick out the water. Okay, so now what I've got is two carbonyls and an OH on the chromium, and that's where structure two comes in. Okay, so notice that this next structure, I'm just going to use colors again so you guys can keep track. This O is here. Um, this O is now the double bond O here because notice that it reformed the double bond. Okay, and then finally, this alcohol is now here. Okay, so it used to be facing the other side. I just made it face this way so that it could be a nice structure so that everything could be spaced out correctly. Okay, so now I've got those three things there. What's the next step? Okay, well, next, what we're going to try to do is release what's called the chromium ester. Just so you guys know, this thing has a name. It's called your chromium ester. Okay, chromium ester. And the chromium ester now needs to be released from the original oxygen. And that original oxygen would be this one right here. We know that that is what came from the alcohol, right? So let's go ahead and figure out a way to do that. It turns out it's going to be an E2 alpha hydrogen elimination. Now, I know that sounds weird because whenever we talked about elimination in prior chapters, if you if you've ever learned about it, we always talk about beta elimination. OK, but there is a such thing as alpha elimination as well, where what that means is that you can take the hydrogen directly from the thing that you're making a double bond to. So what are we going to use as our base? Because remember that elimination reactions always require some kind of nucleophile or base. We're going to use water. How does water count as a base? Because remember that it's our conjugate of the acid that we use, the acid being H3O plus. OK, so this is considered my alpha carbon because it's the one that has the oxygen on it that I was trying to oxidize, right? Kind of like if it was an alkyl halide, I would say this is my alpha carbon. For alpha elimination, I'm going to take away the H that is directly on it. So I'm going to do this, OK? If I make that bond, I have to break a bond because hydrogen can't have two. So now I'm going to make my double bond there, see? So I have an elimination reaction that's actually making a double bond right there on that same carbon, OK? Now if I make that bond, I have to break another bond, okay, because that oxygen can't have that many bonds. So actually what's going to happen is that a lone pair from the oxygen is going to wind up making a double bond there. And then finally, the chromium has too many bonds, so I'm going to kick out this electron from, from the double bond, and I'm going to make a lone pair. So what is this going to give us? Man, what a, what a mess. Well, it's going to give us what we want, okay, because now what I've got is R attached to C and an R. But what else do I have? Well, now I have a double bond O. What do we call it when you have a double bond O attached to a C in two R groups? This is a ketone. Okay, so we just figured out the whole mechanism of how you generate a ketone from oxidation. Okay, this is the part we care about. And this is the part that we're going to generate every time. Usually we're not going to draw this whole mechanism, but now you know it just in case your professor asks for it or in case you just want to refresh yourself on how it happens. But we also have the byproduct, right? The byproduct is just going to be the conjugate of that um, chromium ester. Let's just go ahead and write in that part, even though it's not as important. It's going to be C double bond O, CR. I'm sorry, O, okay. O double bond CR. And then we've got the other double bond here. Then we've got this OH, nothing happened there. But then we've got an O negative because of the fact that we pushed those electrons onto the O. And then finally, we would have the catalytic acid that was used to start this reaction. Okay? All in all, what do we care about? We care about our ketone. Okay? And we would just do this as many times and in as many places that need to be oxidized as possible. Does that make sense, guys? Cool. So once again, if your professor doesn't ask for this mechanism, don't freak out. Just go ahead and watch the video. Don't worry too much about it. If your professor asks for it, then you really need to know it. And I would recommend practicing it several times since it is tricky. All right. So that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next topic.